Well, greetings. It's St. Patrick's Day 2021. Good to have you with us. David here from Donegal, joining you wherever you are in the world as we celebrate our national day. Just gonna make a quick little adjustment or two here. And uh, hopefully I'm coming through okay. Let me know if you can see clearly. Let me know if you can hear clearly this morning. And let me know where you're joining us from as I just adjust my wires and so on. Coming up here to the screen so I can see who we've got and where and all the rest of it. Wonderful. I see some people's names appearing there. Good morning to you, Sean. Wonderful to see you. A very happy St. Patrick's Day to you up in practically in a show in East Donegal, shall we call it. Great stuff in Newton Cunningham. Wonderful stuff. Welcome, welcome. It's about a minute to 11. We'll get started shortly. Thank you, Jean. Excellent. Glad to know it's coming through. You got the sound, you got the picture. You might be able to hear the birds um, singing up in the trees above me. It's a lovely, lovely morning. There's no heat yet, um, but I think it's gonna be beautiful by the afternoon. I think it's gonna be really warm. Hi there, Adrian. Hi there, Audrey and Jackie. And Doreen, a very happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry I have no shamrock on me. It's so hard to get any of these things this year with everything that is going on. So I hope you'll just accept the green jumper as a small nod in that direction. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kathleen. Wonderful. In England and in, uh, and in America and in Tullybrook and in the living room and in Derry Lynn. Hi, Rolly. Hi, Pamela. Great stuff. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Watching from across the bay in Mount Charles. Watching from London Derry. Watching from Ross Cray in uh, Tipperary. Forgive me if I have the wrong county. Or are you in Limerick? Oh dear. I think you're in Tip. Uh, you can let me know and I'm sure my mistakes will quickly be corrected. It's great to have you, Violet. Wonderful that you're here. Claire as well. Hi, Anne Elizabeth. Okay, so it's going to be a fairly short um, service this morning, probably. And uh, we're going to just celebrate our, uh, our patron, uh, Patrick. We're going to celebrate our national day. We're going to mark it with prayer. We would normally have a service in Donegal Church. Normally for me, St. Patrick's Day is the morning is our communion service and the afternoon is our uh, our parade in the town this year, neither of those things. Um, but there's lots of lovely videos of the parades and including uh, if you go to Glebe National School, our little school here in the town, you'll see the nice parade that the children did uh, over the last couple of days and it was all videoed and also uh, the Irish dancing that the teachers did. So it's quite impressive. Um, so although there's no parades, although there's no service gathered together in the church, we can celebrate and we can pray. So please keep those messages coming in this morning. And I'm going to begin with some words from Patrick himself. As I stand here overlooking this historic site, it doesn't go back as far as Patrick, the old friary, Franciscan friary here in Donegal goes back to the 15th century. Um, so Patrick was already a thousand years uh, having been in Ireland before, uh, before this place was built, but still, it's a nice historic site. Patrick said, but this I know most certainly, that before I was humiliated, I was like a stone lying in the deep mud. And he that is mighty came and in his mercy lifted me and raised me up and placed me on top of the wall. Therefore, I ought to cry out aloud and also render something to the Lord for his great benefits here and in eternity. Benefits which the human mind is unable to appraise. Morning, uh, Brian and Barbara. Morning, Sandra and Brian. Wonderful. The Lord be with you. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, on a beautiful day as we 
enjoy the benefits and blessings of creation. We thank you for this land, for this wonderful island of ours, every part of it, north, south, east and west. We thank you that you touched this land in the past by the presence of Patrick and many others who came to preach the good news of Jesus. And today it is not only those ancient leaders that we want to uh, remember, but our living Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to honour him today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment to confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we failed to do. We are truly sorry and for, uh, repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've got to praise God by using Psalm 145. Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Uh, his greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on all your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Well, wonderful words for us to use to praise the Lord uh, this morning. And then I'm going to turn straight to our New Testament reading, which comes today from John chapter 4, John chapter 4, and beginning at verse 31. Meanwhile, Jesus' disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Uh, do you not have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to 
pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Lord, take away from us all distracting and unworthy thoughts and fill our hearts instead with thoughts of you. We thank you that the faith and love that drove Patrick to return to this land. Thank you that that faith is still true and that love is still active by your Holy Spirit. So now, Lord, open our eyes to see wonderful things in your law through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, just I want to share a few thoughts with you uh, just now, if I may. And uh, I was looking back at Patrick's days past, and um, I was looking at last year's St. Patrick's Day 2020, when, if you might remember, it was the very first of the online services that we did. And I was watching it again, and um, actually, in some ways, it's surprising how little has changed, because basically, Everything uh, that we did on that first broadcast, we pretty much still do. Saying hello to people, giving greetings, uh, praying, and giving some Bible input and teaching. Uh, the main difference is that on that first broadcast, I promised that I would sing the next Sunday, uh, and I did. And that has continued, though I'm not planning to sing today, apologies. But... Um, it was good to be able to harness technology in order to reach out. And uh, it's hard to believe that we're still doing that a year later. And perhaps in some ways our parish has been changed by this and will be changed by this and by the fact that we're able to draw people in from so much wider a field. And that's really encouraging and good. So every one of you is very welcome wherever you're coming from today. Um, but I also looked back uh, five years ago, and in 2016, I was privileged to be invited to go up to Convoy in East Donegal and to give a little talk about St. Patrick. It was on the 18th of March, 2016, and Canon Bill Long, who shortly to retire from those parishes, uh, had me along there. And I was reading that talk again, and in fact, um, there were some interesting things in it, and I decided to put a copy of it up onto our website. So if you go to, not our Facebook page, but our website, donegal.rafo.anglican.org, you will find a copy of it there under the heading of articles, and maybe I'll put a link to it. Um, and I just want to share very briefly something from there. On that talk, uh, which was lengthy, I gave seven things that we can learn from St. Patrick, uh, but today really just one. And um, of course, what do we actually know about Patrick? You see, the funny thing is that a lot of the most famous things about him are the things that we don't really know are true. So we have a picture in our minds, perhaps, from a stained glass window of Patrick dressed in a cope and a bishop's mitre, holding his staff, driving out the snakes, teaching the Trinity using a shamrock, and fasting for 40 days on the top of the mountain. And when we actually look at the authentic writings of Patrick, of which there are two documents which he wrote and which survive to this day in copies, uh, none of those things are mentioned. So there's no mention of the snakes directly. There's no mention of Krog Patrick or Loch Derg or any of those things, but they're all possible. But what we do notice when we delve into those original documents, the confession which is a kind of an autobiography, um, and the letter to Caroticus, which is an appeal for some people who had been enslaved to be freed. When we read those, we find a character of great warmth and great reality emerges. Not so much somebody who had no bother sleeping without food for 40 days on the top of a mountain, more somebody who was filled with the challenges and difficulties of day-to-day -day life, but who found in God the strength and power and grace to overcome them. Um, in fact, you can read, if you search on the internet, Confession of St. Patrick, you can read it uh, very easily there online. It would probably take half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to read the whole thing. It's not incredibly lengthy. We know that he was born in Britain 
maybe Wales or England. And he was, of course, kidnapped, brought to Ireland as a slave. He was for about six years a captive here as a young man. And then through story that we don't have time to go into, he escaped back to, the, to Britain. He went to the continent and became a priest. And then he was sent back into Ireland at the call of God to come as a missionary and an evangelist. Not the very first Christian in Ireland. There were others before, but perhaps the first to make a really widespread impact across a range of territory and to lead to the conversion of many, many people. Uh, and the most, uh, the significant thing that I really want to pick out the, today, because I think all the things about Patrick, uh, they're built on a kind of foundation, and that is the foundation of an experience of conversion. An experience of conversion that Patrick went through. You see, he was from a Christian home. His father was a deacon in the church. His grandfather was a priest. So there was a strong church background. And yet he says about it, at that time, I did not know the true God. We had gone away from God. We didn't listen to our priests who told us how to be saved. We didn't keep God's commandments. He was what we would today call a nominal Christian. On paper, he was a, a, he was a member of the church. If there had been a census form circulating around, as there has been, I think, in the UK, and it's going to be next year here, um, he would have ticked the box for Christian or whatever form of it. But he said he had no knowledge of God. And then when these slave traders or people traffickers um, uh, kidnapped him and he was brought to Ireland, it was at that point, at that time, as he was keeping sheep, we think, around Slemish and County Antrim in this land of his captivity, as he was physically taken captive, he was spiritually set free. And this is a kind of a theme that comes in Patrick's writings in the confession uh, that God often uses difficulty as his opportunity. And he lets us go through tough times of testing and hardship in order to bring about good things. So, I mean, we could just reflect on that today. He says, after I arrived in Ireland, I tended sheep every day. I prayed frequently during the day. More and more the love of God increased and my sense of awe before God. Faith grew. My spirit was moved so that in one day I would pray up to 100 times and at night perhaps the same. I even remained in the woods and on the mountain and I would rise to pray before dawn in snow and ice and rain. It was there that the Lord opened up my awareness of my lack of faith. Even though I came about, it came about late, I recognized my failings. I turned with all my heart to the Lord my God, and he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance. And that's where he gives this striking image. Before I was brought low, I was like a stone lying deep in the mud. Then he who is powerful came and in his mercy pulled me out, lifted me up and placed me on the very top of the wall. Um, just this, this, this image here, and maybe you can see behind me this little stone wall uh, right here. Sorry, the light isn't very good on it this morning, but um, we're very familiar here in Ireland, of course, with the stone walls, the dry stone walls and the way that they were often made through stones being picked up from a field, cleared from a field, and then built into walls around it. And Patrick says he was like a stone lying in the deep mud, and then God lifted him up and set him on top of the wall. And the really important thing to realize is that he says, before I was brought low, I was like a stone lying deep in the mud. In other words, before his captivity, before his kidnap, when he was living back with his family in Britain, at that time, he says, I was just like a stone deep in the mud, 
I, nothing was reaching me, no connection with God. And when I was made a captive and a slave, at that time, God lifted me up, put me on top of the wall. So there's this profound conversion experience. Converted to Christ, not from being a pagan to being a Christian, but from being a church-going, uh, respectable, nominal Christian to being an actual believer and follower of Jesus Christ. So, so significant for us. It was only with a deep recognition of his sin and a profound turning to God that he began to be useful to the Lord. And I think that has to be square one for us. It's a wonderful reminder on this St. Patrick's Day to go back to the basics. Um, have we been converted? Have you, been, have you come to Jesus? Not just had a, an upbringing within church, which is a wonderful blessing. And Patrick was thankful for his Christian upbringing and for all that it, it meant he knew. But coming to Jesus in faith. That was the foundation. And all the other hallmarks of Patrick's life flowed from that. His acceptance of hardship, his devotion to prayer, his mind saturated with the Bible, his zeal for evangelism, his commitment to the long haul, his love for people, and particularly his passion for people who are persecuted. All of those things flowed out of this experience of God's mercy, reaching down and transforming his life. So there is the the message for us on this St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we need to give our lives to Christ. We need to respond in faith to him. Our experience might be very different from Patrick's. It may be like his, a gradual process over years of coming to living faith. It may be something that happens in a moment. It may happen when we're very young, so young that we can hardly even remember when we made that, that change to faith. Uh, or it may be when we're in middle age or old age. But the crucial thing is that like Patrick, we can say, the Lord lifted me and gave me new life. And if that's not something that you're sure has happened in your case, then simply a case of praying to him and saying, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Thank you for dying for me. Please come in to my heart and life. We're going to affirm our faith, and I'm going to do that today by using um, St. Patrick's Creed from his own writings. St. Patrick's uh, Creed. This is how he described his faith. There is no other God, nor ever was, nor ever will be, than God the Father, unbegotten, without be beginning, from whom is all being, who upholds all things as we have been taught, and his Son, Jesus Christ, whom we acknowledge to have been always with the Father, who before the beginning of the world was spiritually present with the Father, begotten in an inexpressible manner before all beginning. By him are made all things visible and invisible. He was made man, and having defeated death, was received into heaven by the Father. And he has given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God, in whom we believe and whose coming we expect soon to be, judge of the living and of the dead, who will render to every man according to his deeds. And he has poured forth upon us abundantly the Holy Spirit, the gift and pledge of immortality, who makes those who believe and obey sons of God and joint heirs with Christ. And him do we confess and adore, one God in the Trinity of the Holy Name. Amen. Let's pray to God now. And I'm going to use some, uh, some traditional prayers from our Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, in your providence you chose your servant Patrick 
to be the apostle of the Irish people, to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light and knowledge of your word. Grant that walking in that light, we may come at last to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the church. Hear us, most merciful God, for that part of the church which you have planted in our land, that it may hold fast the faith which you gave to the saints and in the end bear much fruit to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, who in days of old gave to this land the benediction of your holy church, withdraw not, we pray, your favour from us, but so correct what is amiss, and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for this world and for the spread of the gospel. O Almighty God, look mercifully upon the world, redeemed by the blood of thy dear Son, and send forth many more to do the work of the ministry, that perishing souls may be rescued, and thy glorious triumph may be hastened by the perfecting of thine elect. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for what's called a prayer for Christian citizenship. I think this is so suitable for this time. Look, we beseech thee, O Lord, upon the people of this land who are called after thy holy name and grant that they may ever walk worthy of their Christian profession. Grant unto us all that laying aside our divisions, we may be united in heart and mind to bear the burdens which are laid upon us. Help us to respond to the call of our country according to our several powers. Put far from us selfish indifference to the needs of others and give us grace to fulfill our daily duties with sober diligence. Keep us from all uncharitableness in word or deed and enable us by patient continuance in well-doing to glorify thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's take a moment finally to pray for people in particular need. There's a number of people uh, in our parish who are in hospital at the minute and we want to pray for them and to remember them. There are people who are uh, mourning the loss of loved ones there are people, of course, at the minute who are um, wondering what is next with the pandemic. And we do want to pray for it to end and for our churches and our society to open when it's possible. But let's just take a moment of quiet to bring all of these things to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me. It's great to see you today and uh, lovely to be able to come and stand outside here by the Old Abbey in Donegal, looking out over Donegal Bay to the Atlantic Ocean far off over there somewhere uh, just at the horizon. And it's wonderful that you were able to join me. Thank you for all the encouragement. And that's great. And uh, I hope um, you can join us again soon. We have, uh, we have no service this evening. Uh, we're taking a break. But we have uh, All Being Well prayer time on Friday. 
and then we will have our service on Sunday, fifth Sunday in Lent. So um, it's wonderful, wonderful. Everybody, thank you so much for the messages. Oh, and a quick reminder, uh, if you haven't done so, I would love to see your face, um, just as, I don't know if you're loving seeing my face, but you're able to see it today. Um, I would love to see your face, and I'd love to remember uh, anyone at all to send in a little video clip of you simply saying, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. And we're going to use that on Easter. You can send it as a message or WhatsApp or an email. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. That's what I want you to be joining me in saying. Okay, God bless. I'll leave you with a lovely view down Donegal Bay. All being well, we will, uh, we will meet again on Friday. And if um, anything that I've said um, this morning is something that you want to kind of take further and you're, you're, you're wanting to, you know, really investigate how you could make that step of faith that Patrick did, uh, then just get in touch, drop a message, and I'd be very happy to share some more information with you. God bless you, and go in peace. God bless.